TV. The Christmas moose. The Christmas moose. You see that? We're on, we're on TV. That's a Hanukkah moose. It's like more of a Hanukkah moose with those colors. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hanukkah, Christmas, whatever. We're here at Casa D18 Green Room in front of the tree. And I'm back again. Woohoo! Part of yeah, this. back. Yeah, really. We're going to do Christmas movies now. You go over here and you just hang out for a bit. Now, if these movies seem repetitive because you've been watching everybody else's show, or if they're not and you're watching for the first time, be forewarned. We have a lot of doubles, and that's okay because we all think alike. Great minds think alike. Look at that. Why? Yeah, then you have too many fights. You also have a light on the left. Crazy if we all, all right, thought alike right. and all got along, then we wouldn't fight. Anywho, top ten movies. Here we go. All Christmas based. Here we go. Here we go. David Letterman. Number ten. Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas from 2000. Ooh. Reason being, the Woo. makeup. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Very good. Good job. Reason being, number one, the makeup job. Wow. That was... Jim Carrey had said that he was in the suit for so long he got a bit of case of claustrophobia. But yeah, you know, I mean, the fur and the latex and the claws, you know, and all that, I can see how you can get claustrophobia with, a, with all that work. You gotta sit in the chair for four hours, you gotta put all this glue on you, they gotta paint you green. So, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Jim Carrey, great guy, number 10. Number nine, Christmas with the Cranks, 2004, you know? My, my favorite scene from Christmas with the Cranks has to be the Botox scene. <laughs> Basically, they're trying to, you know, be all cool and hip and spray on tans and whatever, and he gets the Botox injections in his face, so his mouth is like this. Okay, and it's stuck. Because that's what happens. <laughs> and that's what happens when you get Botox. Your eyes go like this, and you can't close your mouth, okay? And He's sitting at a table with a, with a bowl of pineapples and a glass of water, and he tries to put the pineapple in his mouth, and he can't, and, and, and he can't chew. And then he tries to take a drink of water, and the water just dribbles all over his mouth. And he's got this horrible deep spray-on tan that, that looks like a – he looks like Snooky. Let's put it that way, okay? Snooky? Snooky. Yes. Snooky is the queen of spray-on tan. Yes. She's not brown, she's orange. Number eight from 1986, The Christmas Gift. John Denver, excellent, excellent. John Denver, who, Renegade actually uh, introduced me to that. So thank you, Renegade, for that one. Um, you know, architect goes to the town. Mean old nasty architect boss wants to level the town. It's like, no, we can't do that. He sings songs on his guitar. Happy feeling movie. Very nice. Loved it a lot. John Denver, he's the man. He's the business. John Denver is that boy approved. Number seven, the original Miracle on 34th Street, 1947. Fred Mertz. No Fred Mertz. I already talked about him before. No Fred Mertz. Fred Mertz. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. No Fred Mertz. Give Fred Mertz. There are two versions, black and white, of course, and they colorized it a few years later. Um, I like I like the whole thing though. I, I don't like it. This is well, black and white. I like the whole uh, department store war between Macy's and Gimbel's. That's what how that's that's what goes on in New York. You know, it's like. In fact, that wasn't even a scene. It's like a lady had come up to uh, Chris Kringle asking for some certain kind of toy, who and when he was working at Macy's, and he says, "Oh, go to Gimbel's or go to this other store down the street. They've got that toy." Macy here, no, Mr. Macy might not like that, you know, or Mr. Macy, Mr. Gimbel, the biggest department store feud since beginning of time, I guess. Are there, are there any other department store wars that I need to know about? You know, is Target better than Best Buy? I don't know. Target and Kmart had a decent little feud going for a minute, mm -hmm. and yeah. then Walmart obliterated them. Yeah, obliterated them all. Kmart had to have Rosie O'Donnell as a spokesperson. That's what killed that feud. Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. yeah, didn't they take guns off their, off their shelves because she... Yeah, because she, she, she hates the NRA. Okay, number six, Home Alone 2. 
Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Uh, mainly, I like it better because, one, I saw it in theaters. And with all the traps going off, it's like, from, from, from the beginning with the, the bricks, from the top of the top of the thing, it's like, how do you take four bricks to the head and not die? If you're getting hit from a brick from two stories up, you should be dead. Everything that happened to them in the entire movie, they should have been dead. Anybody ever tell you that TV ain't real? But still, I mean, let, let's go over the list. Bricks to the head, wrenches to the head, electrocuted, fire, torches. fire torch, uh, <laughs> falling off of a two-story, falling into the hole, falling off a ladder, hit with, well, they didn't get hit with paint cans. They got hit by a giant lead pipe. Uh, let's see. And um, Marv got the worst end of it, too. He, Joe Pesci's character got away with, he, he got, the way Scott Marv took, oh, he got the 50-pound the cement block in his head. You know, he got 10,000 volts. So why does, why does Mr. Daniel Stern get more punishment than Joe Pesci? Is because, is hey, he was a boy would you want to F with Joe Pesci? Years. You've seen Casino. Daniel Stern was just the voiceover for Kevin Arnold on The Wonder Years. There you go. Joe Pesci is a bad A gangster. In Casino and The Goodfellas. Yeah. You don't want to F with Joe Pesci. Wrong him. Okay. Number five, Christmas Story, 1983. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Saw that the, for the first time. Actually, I saw it in middle school. We were watching it. Uh, the teacher was nice, you know, so she put on the Christmas Story. We had to go over three days because classes were only 40 minutes long back then. So we had to watch it, come back the next day, watch it, come back the next day, watch it, come back the next day, then write a report on it. It's like, teacher, can't we just can't we just watch a movie? Can't it's Christmas. I want a two hundred page essay on the Christmas story. Is it TNT or TBS that bastardizes it? Uh, TBS. 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 Don't come on. Give us give us maybe half the day of in fact, do it from Christmas twelve o'clock noon to eight o'clock. Dinner time. That way, when you wake up on Christmas morning, you have your presents, you go to your family, you have dinner, you come home, you can take that long winter nap you want. Number four, It's a Wonderful Life, 1946. Thank you, Pop. Pop introduced me to that one. Should have been higher. It's in the top five. And, of course, the scene with uh, after they, after they uh, come out of the gymnasium with a whole set of different clothes on and his his Buffalo, girls, one, come Buffalo girls come out tonight, and she's. What you wish for me throw that wrong? No, 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 no. When when the robe actually comes off and she's in the bushes, you know, and he's saying that well, this is an interesting situation. You know, it's if that was done in this day, you would have been laid. That movie would be rated X. <laughs> if you did a remake of yeah, really, I said it. I'm sorry about that one. Number, not too soon. Not too soon. Number three. Tim Allen ends up twice on my list with the Santa Claus, 1994. Saw that in theaters. I actually saw that at the El Capitan with, with my grandma. It was very it was very fun to watch. It was a good movie. And if you a bit of trivia, in the original version there, in the scene on the soccer field, uh, Judge Reinhold pa passes off Tim Allen's to Tim Allen his his card. He says, you know, give me a give me a call. And the joke is one eight hundred. Whatever. Dylan's in the room, so I can't. But it was it's a it's a it's a dirty line, okay? In in the DVD releases and whenever they show on TV, they had to edit that scene out because that's not Disney. So that scene is unless you saw it in theaters, you're never gonna find that scene again. And of course, Tim Tim Allen plays a pretty a very good Santa Claus, you know. Um, parts two and three for me are okay. Three was the, the 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 icing on the cake. Let's bring in Martin Short. But the original, I think, is always the best. So there you go. Number two, Muppet Christmas Carol, 1992. Can't go wrong with that. Bring in the Muppets. Bring in Sir Michael Caine. Put in some music. Great way to tell the story. You know, I I particularly like the song at the end of. Uh, before he goes into uh, Bob Cratchit's house, I, what's the title of that one, Renegade? Uh, it's it's one of the big Christmas. Damn it, I hate that. Christmas Carol? Huh? Christmas Carol? Mother Christmas Carol. Mother, yeah. Yeah. So what's the question? The the the, the, the big song, song. 
before he goes into uh, into Crash's Crash house. house. Oh, I forget. It's that upbeat, happy yeah. when he yeah. Come on, Muppets, Mark, tell us. He doesn't. It's okay. He doesn't know. I don't know either. <laughs> and my number one, 1938 Christmas Carol, the original Owen version. That's the best one in my opinion. Uh, you know, it's a classic. You know, I think even I watched that one for the first time with Pop. Pop, you 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 are so cool when it comes to Christmas. You you sat he sat us down here and he said we're watching these Christmas movies because him and Renegade are uber Christmas people, and that's what makes it all special, folks. So here's what here's my here's my stat boy challenge for this: sit your family down, get a whole bunch of Christmas movies, get the classics, get the the newest stuff, sit down, put the kids to bed, or or have them watch it too and watch these Christmas movies with your family because that's what Christmas is about. Family. All right? Kids need to know that. What's that? Kids need to know that. They need to stay up and watch it. Exactly. Exactly. Presents are a plus. Christmas is family. There you go. And dinner and caroling and uh, visiting with your grandma. Uh, grandma I, may be creepy, but she still loves you, folks. I still love caroling. Until she gets ran over by a reindeer. Oh, oh no, really? And she's mad. My I used to love Caroline when I was a kid, too. I love my family very much, and that's why they're on this show. All right? So I've done my shows. There we go. My part of this is done. Watch the rest of the stuff, and I will see you next time. Christmas, Stat Boy, out.